Hey, I hope you had a good Easter. Um, I'm recording this on uh, Bank Holiday Monday, so it's Sunday, it was yesterday. And you know, I had an, I had an okay time actually. I was, we, we did uh, traditional stuff, watched some biblical films, um, didn't really eat eggs because that's not really a tradition we have in our house. And but today I was thinking I'm going to have a nice chill day, I'm not going to be at work until tomorrow, so a nice four days off, and then I'm going for like an 80s weekend, uh, this weekend, and uh, it'll, it's going to be fun, and so I've been in a bit of a 80s kick at the moment, I've been looking at, um, you know, just listening to a bit of it, listening to, some, to a couple of bands I haven't listened to for a while. And seeing as I was going away for an 80s weekend, I thought I'd ask a, a Facebook group, um, Tarot Nerds, and I thought I'd go, oh, what sort of 80s tarot should I bring? And of, and some of the and some nice classics came up, such as the uh, Cosmic Tarot, which I'll be doing my readings, daily card readings for the week. And then some bright spark mentioned something about that um, Starman Tarot. I'm like, hmm. I'll get that another time, I'm not in a rush. Uh, anyway, so today rolls around, I'm like, I've got to chill out. I'm just going to do what I need to do. Then there's a knock at the door. And then I'm going down. Of course I know exactly what it is. Starman Tarot. With the pouch separately. So, I'm like, oh great, I forgot I ordered these. Thank you, Amazon. I now have to do something with these. Now, as I said, these are really interesting cards, so I can't just do a standard review, because how are you supposed to boil down artwork like this to a top five? So, I was going to have a nice chilled out evening with a bit of cider or carver. Looks like I'm going to be doing an unboxing instead. Enjoy. Ah, in fairness, I probably quite enjoy these anyway. So, um, first of all, I'm going to show you the little pouch. Now this pouch is actually, um, is actually separate. It didn't actually come as part of the set, but I thought it was still quite nice to have. Because why not? Uh, the back's kind of plain. Nothing particularly special there. But there we go. So that's a bit better. And we'll start off with this. So I'm not quite sure which cards are on the sides and stuff, but we'll go through that. So first of all, we shall open this. So this is by Le Scarabino, the most, well, in my opinion, it's the most, it's the most ones I've come across are from Le Scarabino, as I've said before. So let me just uh, widen out a bit. So this deck, um, I always forget to have my tape measure for this, but this is about, this box is about seven, eight inches. And uh, so the lid itself feels a bit loose when you untuck, when you uh, unbuck, when you unwrap it. So it feels a little loose. But oh, also a new card smell. Okay, so first off, we shall take a look at the book. So on the front of the box, it says um, by David uh, David D Angelus, and the, um, illustrated by <coughs> illustrated by the artworks he created for David Bowie. We've got that there on the front. And uh, yeah, even the word tarot looks kind of cool and funky in that. And it says exactly the same on the other side. So you can have it either way. So we'll just take this out, take that out the box. So once again, it's a pretty thick box. So this is a, this is a box you can have up and have a nice bit of display. But considering the artwork that's involved with this, I can imagine this is something you'd want to display. So we're going to take a look through the book. Now there is now this I got for about twenty. This one I got for about twenty pounds, so about thirty thirty five dollars. Um, there is like a box collection version uh, where this is like, um, a standard book size rather than card size. And that's about sixty pounds. Um, I think it's about fifty to sixty pounds. So you're about 
70 to 80 dollars so I've got a cool symbol on the back as you do there and uh, so I'm just going to pick a random page and um, we've got all the separate languages so let's just quickly check the bottom of the box here so it does look like you have the standard English, Italian, Spanish, French, Portuguese and Russian I think that's Portuguese yeah because Portugal's on there anyway uh, so it just has them in the in those languages just written in the languages and there are ah so you've got that cool picture inside uh, the bowmaster himself he's probably been called a lot more flattering thing to be honest okay so you have some really cool spreads there so you've got the uh, the lightning flash spread the starman spread and then you just go then it goes straight into the then it just goes straight into the descriptions so by the looks of it you have obviously the original name you've got the name here then you've got the subheading and then the rest of the description and I believe by the looks of it it pretty much goes through all of that in all the different languages so I believe the collecting the collector's version of this would probably be um, I when I looked on Amazon this book um, as I said, it was like a standard size book. The box itself looked about 12 inches, uh, 12 by 12 inches. So the book itself looked more like a more substantial book, and the artwork for each card was on each page. So if you want to get these cards and a really cool book with the same illustrations, then obviously get the collector's edition. But as I said, you're looking at about 50 to 60 pounds. So enough about stuff. Enough about that. Now for the fun, now for what you've been waiting for, um, how I open this without bringing out my pair of scissors. Uh, one thing is pretty cool, it has an Instagram page here uh, for um, more Lascarabina Tower artwork. Um, I do quite like the strength card on the back here, so I might investigate to see uh, what uh, deck that is from. So we're going to... I should really plan these better, but as I said in the intro, I did literally just get these like not even I haven't even had these for 12 hours. I think these arrived lunch time. Okay, so first of all, new card smell smells very nice. Ah, some these are quite glossy, which also is an advantage because they they feel like they first of all they look like they spread really easily. So if you do want to wind up using these for actual tarot readings instead of just looking at them and just keeping them on display only. Well, one thing I have noticed the backs, um, the shades, the shade of it's either dark brown or black, it's very hard to tell but you probably can't see it on the camera but in, in the light I can see they are slightly different shades so you might actually be able to tell what some of the cards are from the back that's the thing I always try to avoid myself yeah, so got a nice Scarabino advert there on both sides. I will try and find out what deck that is. Actually, if anyone knows which deck that is from, do let me know. I'd be very interested. So, I'll put that there. So you've got the Starman thing there and there. So, uh, yeah, it just says exactly the same it said on the box. So I should put that aside. So... <coughs> Let's see what we got now. I've, now I myself ha have seen some of these. I don't think I've gone through the entire deck, but I was um, at a friend's shop, and she had these, and so I know I've seen some of them, but not all of them. So we'll start. So we'll start here with this one is called um, a creased clown. So, uh, sacred clown. Sorry, I misread that. Sacred clown. That does look pretty nice there. Now, these are all pretty funky looking. I know that's much. Now, I'm so let's see. So, we'll do, uh, so you've got David Bowie as the star man instead of the magician. Because what else is he going to be? So I'll try and do that a bit better there. So Because what else is he going to be? So then we have... I can't remember how I did this last time with the uh, anime tower. So I'll do it this way. So then I have the high priestess, and I can't even begin to describe how that is. 
there's just so much there. It's just so much. Um, I'd also want to say the cardstock is quite good. It's a little thicker than the, the normal the Scarabino. It's a little thicker. But it's, uh, as I said, it feels nice and smooth as well, so I don't feel too thick. So now I have the uh, Empress. And this bit always creeps me out because I'm mm, never a fan. But, so you've got the High Priest, so you've got the Empress there. And you, you've got to admit, all, the, all of this artwork is just outstanding. So you've got the uh, Emperor. I'm just going to read it in case it has any different names there. As you tell, because I kind of have it off camera, because I don't want to ruin the next cards for myself or anyone else. So then you've got Hierophant. It's pretty weird and funky there. I'm trying to remember how I did this with the uh, last unboxing I did, but I see it seemed to work quite well. So you've got the lovers, kind of very, uh, very one-sided uh, lovers in that case, but. Uh, Hey, it's trippy. I mean, that's, there's. Oh no, no, that is, a, that is actually a man. I think. I think that's a man. Might be. A man. It's probably a man. My mistake. Probably gonna get in trouble for that one. I've uh, got the chariot, which is all. And it's like the man trying to using it to escape from or into hell. So we've got strength. We've got a cool, funky-looking lady there. It's kind of cool and well, funky. Then we have the alien. Okay, I probably think it's a reference to the man from Mars. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's the man from Mars. Oh, I don't know. I was actually going to do. I, I was actually as an attempt to pre-planning, which is something I very rarely do for these. I was actually hope I was going to. I was considering going through a whole bunch of David Bowie songs and like drop references into them as I do this, and then I thought. That would probably really annoy the people who really like Bowie or be over the heads of anyone who doesn't. So I decided not to. So then we've got the wheel. And let's be honest, that looks kind of terrifying. Uh, although it has a kind of, um, it, it mostly has some hint for me, some kind of Hindu artwork you tend to see. Um, with uh, Ganesh, with, like when you see images of some of the. Um, uh, uh, Hindu gods, it does have a kind of feel to it, which is probably where this comes from, really. So you've got Justice, where it's holding a brain and a heart, which is very Egyptian. Um, if you, I think I've mentioned it in some of my videos before. So then you've got the Hanged Man. He looks pretty classy. Looks quite classy, pretty funky there. So there's not really a lot I can say to this artwork other than, oh my god, that looks amazing, or wow, that looks slightly confusing. Uh, the death card looks very, uh, very artistic, for lack of a better term. Then you've got temperance, not the, not in a classic style, not really with an angel or anything, but it still looks pretty good. Uh, so we've got the devil, kind of eye patch Bowie there, looking kind of cool there with the kind of eye pattern in the background. Now this one I'm looking oh, oops, that's two there. No, excuse me, now this one I was looking forward to seeing the tower. And that is a nightmare hellscape that even Lovecraft couldn't really construct. That's trippy. Uh, as trippy as balls. And uh, we all know how trippy balls can be. So now we have the star and uh, she looks pretty cool. Um, I don't even want to just keep commenting about the artwork, it's just, wow, it's just it's amazing. I'm not a fan, just quick let me know, I'm not really that big a fan of the back of it, but at the same time, you can only, you know, how much, how much do you want from the back, you know? So then we have the moon, in there. I don't think I think I flipped through the deck, but I don't think I've gone through this far, so this seems to be new for me as well. So you've got the sun. And as I said it kind of has uh like a Hindu goddess with the multiple arms. Once again, I don't actually, you know, if you're offended by any of that, I do apologise, it's not intentional, I assure you. Um and you've got judgment. The kind of 
cool angel. I assume it's supposed to be like an angel. And that weird little laser beam she has on the side of his body. That just looks very odd. But, uh, right, so then we have the world. And there's just a lot, just just a lot going on there. Just just so much. I Yeah, there's just a lot going on. Okay, now we're going to go to the miners. And so first to start, we start with the uh, Ace of Cups. So obviously they're going with the cups there. And here's the thing. From how I looked at it to how I'm seeing this reflected on the camera, it looks like a little bloke upside down with the head there and his kind of jumper there and his legs. So it kind of looks like the hanged man. At least from how it looks on the camera. Oh, it's Sauron's eye. Yeah, sort of lizard eye. Or oh, reptilian, I should say. So you've got the Two of Cups, which is... It's... This is a deck you'd either hate or love to, you, uh, to do whilst on acid or mushrooms. I'm not quite sure. I've, I have no under, I've, I have no expert. I have no experience taking mushrooms. I wouldn't really know. And you've got Three of Cups. So it's just... It's just mad. Totally, totally mad. And you've got this Four of Cups. Now this is probably a more negative implication with the Four of Cups. I've not really seen one where the person at the bottom looks so sorrowful. <laughs> if that's the case, let's see what five's going to look like. Um, okay, here's a term I'm going to be using a lot through this. is a uh, Nightmare Hellscape. Now I'd imagine Freddy Krueger spent a lot of his t spare time being bored, just kind of, hey, what sort of nightmares? Hey, Lovecraft, let's work, <laughs> let's, let's collaborate, man. Ah, that would that would be horrible. Right, so that no, this one looks pretty funky. The Six of Cups with all these cool portraits and paintings. So even when the artwork is so varied and trippy, even the actual, yeah, excuse me, even the individual pictures are very disparate. So I would have imagined seeing this sort of uh, sort of this type of picture amongst this. So that's really fascinating to me, and probably to you too. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. Uh, so then you've got the Seven of Cups, and that's not quite as I see it in the traditional manner. But there are a lot of cups. There are several cups there, and it doesn't look like it. It still has the various different items in them. But hey. Artistic license, I guess. So, Eight of Cups has a nice kind of. I like I like some of the graffiti and a lot of things. They do look really good. So, uh, as I said, um, I'm going on a trip this weekend. Well, uh, I'm going on a trip this weekend. So, uh, it's for latest theme thing in Butlins. So, hey, if you want to be there, let us uh, know. And you, you see me there, come along and say hi. Chances of you. Get, the chance of that actually happening is going to be very unlikely, but there you go. Alright, these guys look pretty happy with the Ten of Cups there. I'm not quite pleased to be there. Uh. Uh. Okay, now we've got the... So, we're going, so the court cards, we have Princess of Cups. And, uh, so obviously, I'd say these are not for beginners. Definitely not for beginners. And then you have the Prince of Cups, who looks like something from Tron after a kid's gone for it with crayons. And I'm not saying that as a bad thing. Um, it does sound like I'm, I am, but I'm not. I think that looks pretty funky. So then we've got the Queen, who is being served upon. Good for her, I say. Good for her. And then we've got the King of Cups. And he looks like just some hippie bloke. I think it's pretty cool. Just some like, like just chilling there. So then the next. <sighs> so then the next we have the Ace of Pentacles. So we'll start with the, so the coins are next. This one's kind of uh, Marvel esque. As soon as I saw that, I first thought he was wearing like really large heels, and then I just assumed he was wearing Spider-Man shoes. And uh, so we've got the 
the Three of Pentacles. So some of the artwork is kind of getting a bit. I do like that one, him being all balanced and stuff. It does look pretty cool. Okay, then we've got the Four of Pentacles. Now, this looks very different in theme to some of the others I've come across. With the coins kind of being everywhere, but these kind of. This doesn't necessarily have the same feel of message. It looks like it's more of a patriot, patron of the arts. Patron, patron of the arts. So then we've got the five. And that does look quite along the same theme. So a lot of desolation and poverty and people not being in a good place. In fact, um, I thought actually, well that was actually someone holding a pipe and playing dr the, dr the taking of the drugs. I mentioned mushrooms earlier. So then you've got the uh, six pentacles. The kind of tiger there, tiger man. Although if um, I, I've still yet to see a picture of David Bowie riding on a uh, lightning tiger, or I think it was a tiger made of lightning. I think that's how it went. So then we've got the uh, seven. Yeah, so once again, not quite the traditional, not quite the classic look. But it seems to work out quite well. Um, I do apologise for this yawning. It's not been the best. It's, it's been a very strange week. So then you've got the uh, eight here, eight pentacles, kind of the similar to the apprentice uh, sort of card, but it has more of a uh, sorcerer's apprentice look to it. And I don't mean, and I do not mean the one, uh, the live action one. So. Next we have uh, the nine, and that, is, that appears to be more like a bat. Uh, yep, that is definitely a bat, and I, and the woman has the sun coming out from her chest. So why not? Why not indeed? So next we have the ten. It does look quite cool, the all-encompassing. And uh, yeah, it looks... It's quite peaceful, actually. So we have the princess. And he's got a... Oh, OK. I thought that was a skull look there, but it's not. Yeah. I don't necessarily see a lot of these connecting with the classic meaning. Or at least in the case of the court cards. Um, well, I don't know. Mm. Um... Like uh, the prince, there. I like his little sound system there, with the pentacle there and beaming out white. Oh, projecting a holographic person right there. That's pretty amazing. Well, so amazing. It's pretty cool. Okay, so you've got the queen, queen next, and she looks like she's um, dabbling in a bit of plant work, and she looks like she's coming out of the ground as well. So that does look once again quite funky. Okay, King of Pentacles, once again, may have kind of made him look quite different compared to the other three. Him on his little horse here. And, uh, yeah, he, he looks like he knows what's up. He looks like he he's more of the level-headed businessman. He doesn't look like the classic um, King of Pentacles, which is always a good thing. Okay, so we've got the Ace of Wands, and that's a cool-looking bone. It looks like a bone. I'm sticking with it being a bone. That looks amazing. I would have that tattooed on me, but I've got, well, I was going to say I don't have any space, but look, you can, you can see my arms, I've got plenty of room. I, mean, I need to get some more. Anyway, so, <laughs> two of ones, um, does have the same sort of feel to it with that one. Oh, and the, infin and the impossible triangle at the top there, because the impossible triangle is cool, and one of my favourite t-shirts that I may have to buy a new version, a uh, new one of. Wow, there's a lot, there's, sorry, three of Three of Wands, there's a lot going on there, mostly reflective. Maybe he's just watching uh, Stephen Strange do some stuff and he's like, oh, not again. No, I'm too sober for this. That's what he's saying, that's not what I'm saying. Right, so you've got the Four of Pentacles. And once again, it doesn't necessarily feel... Pentacles? Wands, what am I talking about? Sorry, because I saw the circles of two Pentacles. Um, yeah. It doesn't necessarily have the same sort of feel as the classic riders, but then, I get, but then this sort of thing, most of them won't really, if we're honest. So next up, this one, this one looks pretty cool. So you've got a little 
they look like Lucha Libre masks. Mexican wrestling masks there. So that looks pretty good. Now, I don't know if this is a deck I would use myself, or if I'd use for myself, or if I'd use them for events and read it, uh, for public readings. Um, but then I'd probably have to get used to them. But at the same time, with this sort of artwork, I would be worried about getting them too damaged. But next up, we've got the Six of Wands. Which the guy looks like he's more just kind of strolling around. He doesn't look like he's part of a procession. Oh no, sorry, I'm going to look at that now. Yeah, he 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 looks like he is the man. His arm raised. His arm raised. He, he is the man. He he rules. He owns. He's the best around, and no one can ever put be. No, I don't even know how to rest that song goes now. Anyway, ignore me. Um, well, actually, please don't ignore me. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, so we've got the Seven of Wands, which has that kind of, it has the feeling of self-preservation and the feeling of having to um, protect yourself, really. Not just um, survive, but having to fight for your own sake. So that, that has a good feeling to it. Now, these ones look amazing. Uh, eight of Wands. Uh, fun thing, um, earlier today, I ran up watching a, sh a uh, launch of a satellite and the tr one of the things I wanted to do today was not only put the satellite in orbit but the booster rockets that took the satellite up would then land back to Earth safely so I could reuse them. And I watched this uh, uh, this morning at the time of recording so, and it was all successful so the little uh, craft landed safely so then they can reuse those booster rockets again, saving material. So, hurrah, and that just reminded me of that. And now, that card will, will always remind me of that, and even you, maybe. If you're one of the lucky people who happened to be stumbling upon YouTube at the time that came on. <coughs> it's pretty cool. Um, you can also look it up tomorrow, there might, there might be highlights there. So now we have the eight, uh, nine of wands, and he looks terrifying. He, he does not look the sort you'd want to walk past at any point of the day, be it night or day. But uh, it does have a kind of self-defeat to it, I guess. Uh, so now we've got the 10, and he don't look good. He don't look good at all. Um, that does have a kind of very oppressive sort of feeling to it. So now we move on to the princess, as Mario would say. Um, princess of Wands. Um, she looks like she's still trying to get her stuff together and still trying to figure out how things work. What does the prince have to say? Uh, he looks interesting. It's um, I'd I'd always keep thinking I'd worry about worrying out of things to say, but I think I'm getting by. Um, yeah, he looks also kind of phantasmal, I guess. That's the film I need to go see, Phantasm. I might watch that tonight, actually. Uh, Queen of Wands. She looks like she's got all of her stick together and she knows what's up and she will tear your muck up, son. Or daughter, depending. Yeah, she looks like she knows what she's doing. She doesn't look like a woman you'd cross, but doesn't necessarily look a woman of vengeance. Uh, then you've got the King of Wands. He looks like he's a man of nature and a man who kind of understands the natural order of things rather than the law of man. And none of this I've actually read from the book. Um, I won't actually go do reading through the book, mainly because of dyslexia. So this video is one up being an hour and a half long rather than coming up to 26 minutes. Actually, if I'm including the intro, I've probably already hit 30 by now. All right, so we've got the Ace of Swords. And it's interesting because the sword looks like it's made, the blade of the sword looks like it's made of wood. Oh, no, no, it's more rusted. More rusted iron there. That's pretty cool. Alright. Ooh. I like that one. They're split in half. They've got the sword on each side and they're split in half. Which does kind of illustrate um, uh, how they are in that way. Uh, so I've got three of swords. Once again, not as, typic not as typically tragic as the normal three of swords, so... That's pretty cool. Calling that cool is not that as depressing. But um, I, I think that's quite nice. Uh, it's the softest way I've seen that. 
So you've got three of, uh, four of swords there. That looks pretty cool. That does look like something you'd either have on a yoga mat or on a poster. Um, um, as I said, if you look up the artist, they've probably got a whole bunch of stuff up that's probably available. I mean, I'd be very surprised if artwork like this um, from David Duane Angelis, um, if their artwork isn't available, I'd be very surprised. So you've got the Five of Swords there. It looks kind of grim, but not overly grim, but it's more of, it does have that feeling of being not overwhelmed, but being bested. Not, um, it doesn't have that arrogant feel as the classic version does, but it still has that kind of, you know you've lost. Um, so then we've got the six. Um, they, so you still have that feeling of a journey and travelling, but not necessarily with someone else. It doesn't. It might just be more of a spiritual journey, but it does have that feeling of you, there is a set goal, and also to also to kind of watch where you're going. So where is it there? So to avoid where you're going, just in case. So we've got seven. Um, that's kind of bizarre futurism, kind of like a 70s um, sci-fi sort of thing. Oh, in 80s, looks like something that um, Lou Ferrigno would have been in before he did the Hulk. I think before, I think he did Hercules before he did the Hulk. Um, Eight of Swords looks quite interesting, with the sarcophagus being down there as an Iron Maiden. So, um, oh, and there's a little shabty there as well. Also being restricted. So I think it might be one of those, oh no it's not an infinite thing, there isn't one at the bottom there, but as you can see there. There we go. But yeah, as I said, with, with this, with a lot of this deck, the, there's a lot going on in the background. So, there is this one type of reading you can do where you lay out, um, you, it's clear, depending on the side of the table, 5x5 five five or 6x6, six six, and you just kind of look over the cards and pick out what jumps out to you when you do the reading and then you just kind of pick each card out or you pick out features from those cards you'll have a bleeding lot you'll have, you'll have a novel you'll have a novel at the end of this okay next we have the nine of uh, nine of swords and you know what that's not the most nightmarish thing in this deck so that's quite a thing to think about but it's uh it does have that feeling of oppression or maybe the feeling of um, like mental, because sometimes this card also represents like bad sleep or like mental health issues, and that does have a kind of mental health issue vibe to it as well. So I do think that's quite interesting. Uh, Ten of Swords, not as horrific as you'd think. Um, still looks pretty funky and weird, but not as uh, not as depressing or oppressive as some of the some of the, the other cards have been or as bad as this you think this one would make so and then we've got the print uh, the princess of swords and she's doing stuff in a place that's <laughs> that's a lot of background um still pretty cool and funky once again this is the sort that of, um, this is the sort of thing you could have as a poster or a yoga mat or I mean, this isn't the sort of thing you'd have printed as a T-shirt. That definitely wouldn't look right. You'd need you'd need a full wall portrait for that one. And we've got the uh, Prince of Swords, who, as soon as I saw that, made me think of the Crow, with Brandon Lee, and um, also the amazing, the amazing Crow with Ed Furlong, the guy from Terminator 2: Salvation. Salvation? Terminator Judgment Day. That's the one. Judgment Day. Salvation was the other really good Terminator film. You can't see my face, but I'm grinning ear to ear because I'm not being serious at all. Please don't think I really like The Crow Wicked Prayer. Never actually seen it. Um, Queen of Swords. She looks kind of cool with her kind of clown makeup. With her sad clown makeup. That looks pretty good. Uh, come, on, oh, come on, focus. Come on. There we go. Yeah, she uh, she still looks like a force to be reckoned. She still looks, looks like a force to be reckoned with. Last we have the uh, King of Swords with an angry baboon. That's one angry looking baboon. I did not think I'd say that through this uh, video. <laughs> That's a one angry looking baboon. Um, I can't, I can't, I'm sorry, I just can't stop thinking about that. 
Boom, look at the baboon. It's mad. Anyway, um, yeah. The, sorry, I didn't even have to look at the king. Yeah, the king looks... He does look like a man who doesn't really care. He looks like a less camp version of Jeff Goldblum from Thor Ragnarok. I had to chuck in a Marvel thing at some point. Had to. But, um... Yeah, so these cards themselves, um, sometimes you get a deck that look really good, and it, but the feeling is oppressive, such as the Thoth deck. Um, but yeah, these 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 don't necessarily to me these don't really have like a these just these energies just feel neutral. I'm not getting really much from them because I I don't necessarily pick up a pack of cards and then feel if they're if they have good energies. I mean, as I said, I've I've held the Thoth, I've held the Thoth deck, and they do feel a bit weird. These feel fine, so to me these are fine. So to you, they'll either be equally fine or just mind blowing and just amazing. But um, as I said, these aren't these are definitely not for beginners. That's, um, so, but then these don't necessarily have to be used to be. You don't have to buy them to actually use them. It is nice bits of artwork. And they spread beautifully. As my friend Tarry Tidbits always says, it's like you're getting a piece, it's like you're getting 78 pieces of artwork for like $30. And, um, but in the, uh, another thing I'd like to add, because with the special edition, the large box, that comes with one extra card. Um, I, I, I always feel, I'm not sure how I feel about stuff like that. Because I would like to have that extra card. But as readings go, I'd rather just... If I'm buying the standard or the special, I wouldn't buy all of the other bits from the special to get that one extra card. If the one extra card was in this deck anyway, brilliant. Um, with the special, as I said, you've got the larger book, you've got the additional card, but then obviously it's a large box, and unfortunately I'm not in a position where I can own such a box. Mainly because I've got nowhere to store it, but um, but then at the same time, the only thing I would be interested in is the extra card and maybe the book. But I'm not as worried about the book because I've got the cards. So I let that down to you. I uh, leave that sort of decision down to you. But yeah. So at the moment, at, of time of recording, um, these arrived today, uh, Monday twenty. No, Monday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> getting a bit everywhere today so uh, uh, Monday the 22nd today I ordered them last night so th at least in the UK these are in stock so uh, if you want to go to Amazon and pick them up go for it and uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe you can also follow me on blue six tarot on Twitter and Instagram where I do my card of the day uh, this week I'll be doing the cosmic tarot and I'm not quite sure the cards I'll do next week, but um, I'll also be doing my weekly forecast using the Cosmos Tarot. Hopefully that should be up on Thursday. And uh, meanwhile, don't forget to check out some of my other videos on my channel. Um, there'll be uh, links in the there'll be links at the end of this video. Once again, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, tell me what you think of this deck if you've got it. If you if you've watched this uh, video and you've made it this far. God bless you. And if you've made it this far and you already have this deck, um, let me know what you think of the deck, how you've managed to work with it, or if you haven't got this deck and want to get it and you wind up do getting it, uh, let me leave um, let's say, let me know in the comments on the social medias. Let me know what you think of these cards, how how you've been doing them, how you've been dealing with them. All right, and uh, I hope you all had a lovely Easter, and I'll speak to you soon.